Hi everyone, Charles here for MLB Papers. On October the 8th, John Hopfield and Geoffrey Hinton officially became the recipients of a Nobel Prize in Physics 2024 for their foundational works in machine learning and AI. Now, what got these folks a Nobel Prize in Physics? And what is the connection between their works and physics? Does it really deserve the Nobel Prize? Basically, what is their work about? That's the topic of today's video, but before that, an anonymous member from the Nobel Prize Committee told me that you are a hundred times as likely to receive a Nobel Prize if you give this video a thumbs up, subscribe to this channel, and hit the bell icon to get notified of the next video. That's completely free for you, and besides increasing your chances of getting the prize, it really helps the channel. Thank you so much. Let's jump in. Hopfield's Network The story starts with John Hopfield. His original motivation was to store information effectively in a computer, like a list of names. Geoffrey Hinton, John Hopfield, Charles Ryu. If you want to find my name in your computer, you just have to type it, Charles Ryu. And here I am. Boom. But you should be able to retrieve me even if you type part of my name. Or even if there is a spelling mistake. And that is the difficult part, because neither Ryu nor Ripu is in the system. For that purpose, John imagined the computer memory as a landscape with mountains and valleys. In this landscape, each point corresponds to a potential name. And when you store a name in your computer, this one becomes a valley. Every time you type a name to retrieve in your computer, you drop a little marble on the landscape, which rolls, rolls, rolls until it reaches a valley, which is a computer output. The idea is that if you type an exact full name, your marble falls directly in its corresponding valley and the computer outputs the name you are looking for. However, if what you type looks like one name in the storage, the marble will fall next to the corresponding valley, and by the effect of gravity, it will be attracted to the valley. The computer will thus identify the exact name, and it will output it. Now, how did John formalize that? Every name is represented in your computer by a sequence of n zeros and ones. Hopfield's genius idea was to consider a brain network of n neurons where each neuron is connected to any other one by a synapse. Every name, or sequence of zeros and ones, corresponds in our network to a set of active neurons. Like the name John Hopfield corresponds to activating those neurons, the name Geoffrey Hinton corresponds to activating those neurons, and so on. The activation of each neuron i is represented by an activating potential si equal to zero or one. In our network, neuron i receives an electric signal from every other neuron j which is scaled by the conductivity Wij of the synapse Ji, which can be positive or negative. If the total energy received by neuron i is positive, then the neuron is activated, and its potential is set equal to 1. Otherwise, it is set to 0. This is a dynamic network. Starting from a set of active neurons, the system will keep updating itself until it reaches a stable configuration of active neurons. Going back to our initial problem, the name you type corresponds to an initial set of active neurons, which will evolve until it reaches a stable configuration of active neurons, which corresponds to a full exact name stored in your computer. Hopfield explained that such a system may store a number of names as large as 15% of a number of neurons n. Boltzmann machines. Then came Geoffrey Hinton. Looking at Hopfield's work, he thought, oh, neural nets, that's cool. That could actually be useful to solve different tasks that a true human brain can solve. For example, if I showed you this beautiful yet incomplete picture of a giraffe, I am sure your brain would have no trouble imagining the whole picture. Hopfield's network, however, can retrieve the picture of a giraffe only if the complete picture of Mrs. Giraffe was previously stored. Hopfield's network cannot generate the missing part of a picture. So Hinton thought, oh, that would be brilliant if we could make a network that can reconstruct Mrs. Giraffe. Hinton took Hopfield's networks and did two major changes. First, he changed the neuron's activation rule. Remember that each neuron i receives energy from the other neurons, and in Hopfield's network, neuron i is activated if it receives a positive amount of energy. In Hinton's network, neuron i is activated randomly with this probability. That mysterious formula comes from a thermodynamics model called Boltzmann statistics, which is used to describe the level of energy of molecules in a fluid. Hinton visualizes his network of neurons as an ideal gas 
or clogged molecules in a closed jar. If you heat your jar at temperature T, after a while, each molecule of your gas will be activated with that same probability. But there is one more change. Hinton also added more neurons to the network, called hidden neurons. Those hidden neurons capture the complex and intricate patterns in the observations. The neural network becomes much more complex and can more realistically try to solve the tasks that a human brain can. This network is called a Boltzmann machine. Now, as you can see, there are a lot of neurons and they are all connected to every other visible and hidden neuron, creating a big can of worms. This means that your network has to make a lot of computations and therefore it is rather ineffective in practice. To tackle that issue, Hinton introduced the restricted Boltzmann machine. Hinton just took a Boltzmann machine from which he removed all the links between two hidden neurons or between two visible neurons and only left all the links connected a visible neuron to a hidden one. For the graph theory enthusiasts out there, this network is called a complete bipartite graph. Restricted Boltzmann machines have been successfully applied to a whole range of fields, including classification, immunology, or even quantum mechanics. According to the press review, Hopfield's networks and Boltzmann machines are the works which owed John Hopfield and Geoffrey Hinton the Nobel Prize in Physics 2024. Finally, I would like to give credit to David Ackley and Terence Sijnowski, who co-authored Geoffrey Hinton's work on Boltzmann machines. Now into the controversies. First about AI, and next about the price. The dangers of AI. Hopfield and Hinton's works led the foundations of today's AI, ChatGPT and Elon Musk robots, whose capabilities go far beyond what was imaginable when they started their works in the 1980s. And they both raised concerns about an AI technology getting out of control, Hinton in particular. Things took an unexpected turn in 2023 with the release of GPT-4, where people started to realize that AI was becoming capable to answer complex questions at the level of an ultra-knowledgeable hypothetical human. In March 2023, more than 30,000 scientists, including Hopfield, co-signed an open letter called Pause Giant AI Experiments, calling for a pause on the train of AI systems more powerful than GPT-4. Two months later, in May 2023, Hinton announced that he quit Google Brain, where he had been working for 10 years, in order to freely speak out about the risks of AI, further adding that general purpose AI may arise in less than 20 years from now. Now, what are those risks? First, autonomous weapons, which can target and kill humans, had they been designed by malicious actors, I'm sure you can think of more than one, and with AI technology becoming more and more accessible, this is definitely a risk. Many AI figures have called for a ban of such weapons, including Hinton in 2017. Second, there is also the risk of AI getting out of control. While AI systems are designed to optimize a complex objective, this optimization may be decomposing to other, simpler sub-objectives, which may not align with humanity's objective, like killing all the humans, for example. Finally, and more realistically, in the short to mid-range, comes the economic risk. AI capabilities may extend to most of the jobs out there, making the non-AI specialized crowd more or less redundant, and hence increasing social inequalities. Now, that's a pretty dark picture all across the board, yet I just want to mention that Geoffrey Hinton is one of the more pessimistic AI experts, and some other major AI figures, like Yann Lequin, are much more reassuring in that perspective, especially about the human extinction thing. But just between you and me and the MLU Papers community, um, are you worried about a potential future of AI? Or do you think it's overhyped? Leave a comment down there. Controversy about the price. In this video, I tried to highlight the connections between physics and the works of Hopfield and Hinton, and those have further been the backbone for the development of modern neural networks largely used in many areas of physics. However, their connection to physics is not the most straightforward to say the least. For example, last year's prize was given to Agostini, Krauts and Louis Lier for creating short pulses of light to study the movement of electrons. Hard to deny that it's physics. Giving the prize to a not so clearly physics work may deter people from studying physics and encourage them to go for machine learning instead. Now we do need machine learning scientists, but it should not be at the expense of physicists, because we also need physicists who deserve the support of institutions like the Nobel Prize. On the other side of the road, there are many supporters of the Nobel's choice, because Hopfield and Hinton's works have truly changed the face of the methods used in nowadays physics. And the Nobel Prize in Physics should reward scientific achievements 
which have conferred the greatest benefits to mankind and their respective fields, quoting the words of its founder, Alfred Nobel. And from that perspective, Hopfield and Hinton definitely qualify. Anyway, those are the arguments on both sides. I believe that my job as a content creator is not to tell you what to think or whom to support, but instead to share information with you so that you can decide which side you stand by, if you want to stand by any side at all. Just one thing though, Hopfield and Hinton are amazing researchers who have done an amazing work at the cost of blood, sweat, tears, and hours of hard work. I think we should respect that, and if any disagreement at all, it should be related to the decision of the Nobel Prize Committee and not to those two researchers' merit. But what do you think? Would you have given the Nobel Prize to Hopfield and Hinton? Would you have included other recipients as well? Or would you have given it to some other physicist? Please let us know in the comment section down below. As always, if you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe, hit the bell icon, I would really appreciate that. Also, don't forget to check out my other videos for more or less technical content. Thanks again so much for watching. I wish you a wonderful week and I'll see you in the next video. Cheers.